many investment opportunities in the $250,000 and above per transaction who want to support social enterprises, who want to work at social enterprises when really there aren't that many out there. Uh, so that's kind of a, a challenge, I think, for everyone right now. Um, and then a couple of, uh, my last one would be the trend that we're seeing is scale. Everyone's talking about scale, scale, scale. How do you scale social enterprises so that they become the next Google and create social impact for millions? No one has really figured it out. We're doing some research on best practices around scaling of social enterprises. Um, but that's, I think, one of the important research topics, I think, for academics um, in terms of really what are the benefits of scaling in this social space and how do we define it? Is it really relevant? And I think my time's been over, so thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you, Louis. Um, so that was really useful to get your, your perspective here. Uh, and Louis has been very helpful uh, throughout the process, from the beginning and the, to the end, to challenge the way we conceive social enterprises and um, to, to, to make sure we, we, we stay kind of relevant. Um, what I wanted to do now is to uh, give you a sense of the process of what, what sort of questions that we need to answer to, uh, when building up our, our database. Um, and basically, I've, I've singled out sort of six steps that we undertook. So the first one, as, uh, as was mentioned uh, earlier, you know, who, who are we interested in? Do we want to survey the enterprise? Do we want to survey uh, uh, the entrepreneurs? Um, we kind of took a sort of midway decision. We decided our unit of observation is the enterprise, but we are going to learn more about the enterprise through interviewing the social entrepreneur, the guy who is running the director of the social enterprise. And by doing so, we were able to collect both data about the organization as a whole, as well as about this guy who's running, who is the CEO. Um, okay, as was mentioned before, there is no definite consensus of what a social enterprise is, and the sort of paradigm uh, making actors are mainly non-academics. Yeah, that has been mentioned before as well. So uh, organizations like Ashoka, uh, like Skoll, um, they are working hard to sort of, as well as, as much as uh, government agencies are working hard to sort of push forward and, and advocate uh, one, one way of viewing an entrepreneur uh, or not. Um, and as was mentioned as well, you know, there's a whole spectrum of organizations uh, that we see in, in the market. So the ones we're most familiar with are the traditional non-profits who 100% rely on, on government monies or private do donations. On the other hand, I guess we, are, we feel quite confident that we know what a traditional company is. Uh, it's one that's designed really to, to, to maximize its profits. And yes, it can take on social features as long as it doesn't compromise profits. But of course, what's interesting, and this is the space where we are at, is really this whole hybrid space in between those extremes. Um, and um, actually, it turns out for us, it was I think we, we kind of rather quickly uh, agreed on which is the type of enterprise we're going to focus on. So, so we are really using quite narrow definition uh, b just because it's most in line and most kind of in sync with our action research agenda. So here's what we wanted to look at. We wanted to look at social ventures whose primary purpose, primary goal is to fulfill a social mission, um, but are doing so in a very entrepreneurial, market-oriented way. They're selling services uh, or um, selling, selling products. Yeah, so again, why this particular focus? We wanted to sort of twofold. We wanted people who know how to think about business models, creation of business models, because we think those are the people who probably have most relevant insights for mainstream businesses. And at the same time, we wanted people who uh, had um, practical sort of uh, insight into what are the societal needs and how can we address them. Yeah? But of course, that's not it, right? So, I mean, this is not enough to actually build, build a database. So we tried to operationalize that even further, uh, and here's a couple of extra dimensions that we thought were important. So one has to do, okay, whose perspective are we interested in? We want the perspective of the director, but obviously also talking about um, the organization as a whole. 
Um, we wanted to look at organizations that were really creating employment. So organizations that uh, were employing at least one full-time equivalent. Yeah? So basically that kind of rules out sort of one-man show shows, basically organizations that are uh, managed uh, and run by just one individual only and, and are not really uh, creating new employment possibilities. Yeah? Uh, thirdly, we wanted organizations that are market oriented. So for this, we took a rather conservative sort of uh, threshold of 5% generating own revenues, which actually on average in our data set is 60%. So this is, this is really low, uh, but um, the, the, it was actually chosen because of, of some um, legal, uh, legal context in Romania. But okay, so, so the point is we wanted these organizations to be engaging in the market. Yeah? Uh, and finally, we, were, we wanted to look at organizations whose primary purpose is to really um, create social impact. And uh, for this, how did we kind of single out, how did we identify these guys? Well, at the very beginning, one of the screening questions would be to tell us more about the rationale, purpose of your organization. And then we would have a, a uh, rating fr framework that would kind of rate and score all the answers that uh, the, the response to that question along a number of dimensions. Yeah? So we would be um, using five dimensions related to social mission. So this can uh, relate to do you involve, who do you involve in, uh, in the def defining and, and kind of uh, fine tuning of your service could be one, how participatory are you, uh, what are you trying to achieve, uh, societal change at a community level, at a, at a national level and, and, and far beyond that. So those are sort of some of the examples of the five dimensions we, we, we try to rate and then we also looked at clarity how clear is their mission because presumably if the, the mission isn't uh, if that social mission is very clear it's probably not very effective either so those are some, some of the criteria used and but you know if there's a sort of check on all those four dimensions this guy would be included in our data set yeah of course um, next question is how, where do we find them as Suntita was mentioning there is no um, available sort of sampling frame that we can readily draw on. We cannot just open our telephone book uh, directory and look for all the social entrepreneurs. Uh, moreover, as was as uh, Loic was rightly pointing out, you know, some people are really doing, would be fitting all our four criteria, but never thought of themselves as being a social entrepreneur. So this is whole kind of self-identification challenge as well. Um, okay, uh, so, the, you know, there's no clarity on, on, on how, do, how do we understand social enterprise. Um, so, and as, as, again, as was mentioned earlier, so this makes our population a hidden population. Yeah? So it's hard to find, they're rare. And, and in, the, in that sense, they are much like uh, drug addicts, sex workers, illegal immigrants, all those types of people who uh, researchers are interested in. In fact, if you want to do systematic, reliable uh, sort of data collection on these populations, it's really, really difficult. Yeah? Now, um, so what, what, you know, so obviously we kind of scanned and looked at, you know, what are the different traditional survey techniques that are being used? Um, and, you know, one thing would be, uh, as the Global Economic, uh, Global Entrepreneurship Monitor is, does, uh, uh, is, is to say, look, we're going to use a population representative sample and we're just going to interview a, a representative sample of all people in Belgium and hopefully We'll, we'll, we'll pick up some social entrepreneurs. And indeed, it's kind of, kind of hopefully because actually the share of social entrepreneurs is still very, very low. So, you know, you'll be interviewing mass of people and then hopefully, you know, 2% would actually be directors. So, of course, this kind of survey technique we couldn't afford. It would be too expensive for us to actually do this. Uh, um, so we had to find a, 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 a quicker way to get at our um, population of interest. Um, one alternative, uh, which we obviously considered, is should we be working with Ashoka, should we be working with network organizations, uh, or should we just build, use Nest's data set and basically uh, interview and, and look into the behaviors of, of the, all the organizations that Nest supports. But then again, we would have a Nest database, which is not necessarily sort of uh, representative of the population as a whole. So we wanted to avoid that, uh, and with Ashoka as well, same problem. There is, there's, there's no clear clarity of who's in, who's out, moreover Ashoka looks at individuals not, as, uh, not at, at, at the organization as a whole. Uh, so for us, there was sort of a, a risk there that we could compromise critical objectivity and uh, that the external validity of any such database will be limited. Not an interesting, of course, but limited. Um, so, um, so then we, we decided, okay, we're going to just do it ourselves, build up an own, uh, our own data set and really uh, use a method that sociologists at, at Cornell have been pioneering 
which is really the, has been developed to develop to look at those hidden populations, to look at uh, behaviors of sex workers, to look at behaviors of de- drug addicts. We said, okay, let's use that approach, and now let's use it to, to look at social entrepreneurs. Yeah. So that method has been used in other realms, has never been used in uh, in the area of uh, social enterprise. So then. Um, how, what, what's sort of important in this method, so it's a respondent-driven method, which means we begin with the selection of seeds in each country, and then uh, those seeds uh, refer us to other social enterprises. Yeah? So we actually uh, kind of start with a small group of seeds, and then we, op- we build up our, our database. Uh, we, we selected the seeds on a number of criteria, but what's important, actually, as long as our chains are long enough, the, the, the criteria, the, who we chose as seeds, doesn't matter anymore, so the, so it becomes uh, irrelevant um, according to the theory. Now, what's more is that what sort of the logic of this approach is really that you want to build chains that are very very long. Yeah, so you have one seed, and we'd like this person to be able to generate ref- uh, a long chain of referrals. And the longer that chain, the deeper we penetrate the population, and the more representative our sample becomes. Yeah, and so the rule of thumb is you want on average three to four waves per seed, and we have many more actually on average. So, so that, and there's many, many other reasons and tests we can do, but basically it, it builds confidence that the sample that, we're, uh, that we've, um, we've been looking at is indeed country representative. Okay, now, very brief, briefly, there's three more steps to go, and I just got to notice only two minutes. So, uh, of course, so I've covered the grounds on who do we want to look at, and... Uh, 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 um, <laughs> And, and what method do we use? Then we want to look at you know, how, which countries to select. Of course, there's a couple of considerations we made. One is the policy relevance. So, and of course, there was a clear question from the EU, try to kind of cover geographic grounds, the different sort of areas, north, south, east, west. Uh, then we looked at, of course, the, the cost implications. So it made sense for us to look, at, look into the countries that Nest is active in, is working in, because uh, that would obviously reduce um, you know, some, some, of the, some of the costs that, that are, are related with building up this the data set. And of course we chose, we, we uh, looked at these uh, countries in terms of the population in general, but our target population in, in more specifically. Uh, again, feasibility. Uh, Nest had done a study on, on Hungary, Romania, looking at what's the potential for social enterprises to merge. Uh, looked very, very positive. So, so we were kind of um, convinced that we would be able to actually find all these guys in, in those two countries. Uh, and then there was other considerations like, you know, how comparable are these countries in terms of institutional factors like GDP per capita, uh, inequality, things like that. Yeah. And so on, on the basis of those considerations, we ended up with the following five countries, Hungary, Romania, UK, Spain, and Sweden. Okay, then the big question, what questions to ask, and as you can imagine, since this is interdisciplinary, there's lots of pulling and, and shoving, like, oh, I want to ask this, but no, I want to ask that, and so it was quite a, a, a big um, big challenge. Now, big considerations that we, 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 uh, we had when selecting, the, the questions was, you know, uh, let's use as much as possible validated questions. Yes, we can be kind of creative and kind of create our own questions, but uh, let's try to use as much as possible validated questions, because that means we can actually compare the answers we get from our sample to, to answers that were given to those same questions uh, using other samples. Uh, we also created a rich data set. Um, cross-country panel dimensions is very important, and um, of course, we were very aware that we would be trying questions that probably wouldn't work after one round, and we would have to sort of drop them or revise them, fine-tune them. And a lot of that happened, indeed, in between those two rounds. Now, uh, in terms of questions, we ask about the, social, the, the director who runs the social enterprise. We ask about his age, his values, his uh, background, his, his education, and so forth, and so forth. And then there's many questions we ask about the enterprise itself, ranging from, you know, how does it operate, navigate the markets? Was it the first, pers- uh, first organization offering this, 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 this uh, portfolio of services, or were there others already in the marketplace? Did others imitate those uh, social enterprises uh, or not? And who were those others that were imitating? Things about innovation, things about their performance. Are they measuring their social performance, their financial performance? And if yes, how? What criteria are they using? How frequently? Are they uh, measuring impact? Uh, what about the personnel practices? Is it very, you know, is it a flat, flat organization? Is it a lot of hierarchy? How do they remunerate the personnel? Incentivize, motivate, etc. Um, and then what, what was really kind of 
neat about this technique because uh, organizations refer us to three other organizations, we took the opportunity to also uh, get their perspective on those three other organizations. So basically we asked them, you know, how successful is that organization that you're referring to us to? Uh, how successful is it in terms of generating uh, social impact, generating financial impact? And so that's a nice sort of way of trying to triangulate a little bit our, our data. Okay. Technically, uh, loads, of, loads of questions. We felt there were certain questions which are a bit personal and we felt it wouldn't be appropriate to ask those things over the phone. So we, we, uh, we built a online survey and a phone survey. Online survey took about 20 minutes. So, uh, phone survey uh, took about, well, depending on which country, in Spain, in Spain two hours and a half. In uh, other countries, the UK, quite